Is it the nobody remix that you worked on with Lekon that brought about your issue with him? That he called you out for? Yes. I feel it's just the tone of how he came about the tweet. Well, I was with somebody the other day, they were like, all oh, these artists, when does they collect advance? They collect advance, they go, go tear bands. You carry it. You know, when your feature, they drive, they go so like. Wait. <laughs> but you blocked me now on Twitter. <laughs> You just, you just <laughs> Why are you like this? So Why did you have to bring that to Okay, you report yourself. So I was going on Twitter Let's and I'll be there. like, Let's get there. Jin, Jin, I like you. I have a crush on you. <laughs> Date me. I wasn't letting him know my intention. Oh, like, Mori, any event would they like it? Oh, they like me. So, Kini, like why Kini intentions? I'm buying it. More like it. God, I miss the days when we didn't have to do like TV and everything so live, 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 live. So this is simultaneous on TV and yeah. Uh, yes, oh, it okay, is. Welcome to the Zero Conditions podcast. And that's on period. We are back like we never left. I feel like the more we get into the, doing the podcast, the more my intro gets better, right? I, I feel so. No. I, mean, I need, okay, no. fine. That's no. not good. Okay, no. whatever. <laughs> Fuck you. You're just a hater. <laughs> but yes, we are do back. And today on the podcast, we've got the amazing greatness. <laughs> <laughs> I love the energy in here, man. I love the energy. <laughs> Is it what's working? Is it that guy? Oh, no, 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 no. I've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for this. Uh, to say that. <laughs> <laughs> say greatness. It's great to be here, too, man. <laughs> But it's, it's ridiculous how you've consistently given us greatness as a tagline. Um, I mean, it's 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 the lifestyle. It's everyone wants to be great, regardless of whatever you do. Greatness. Yeah, exactly. You're. I mean, great guy, great lady, great guy. You know. Um, and you have another we album finish, called. We didn't finish the intro. Yes, we oh. did because you caught me short. Now Sorry. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> this does not come to me. Thank naturally. you very much for the support on the Shea Kuti episode, guys. That was very amazing. Yeah. Um, thanks for the incredible support. Shout out to the media partners and the influencers as well. Um, this episode, this episode was still, is still being brought to you by Shiva Shrigo. Buy yes. yourself a bottle of XV. Buy yourself a bottle of Shiva Sitsin. I, I would go with 12. You like 12? I love 12. I think it's my fave. 12? Yes. That's what I had yes, last week, right? Yeah. That's my fave. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. You're a very <laughs> strange woman, man. I know that. <laughs> and also, we are live on Pop Central, channel 189 on DSTV. Catch us live, Nickers. Yes. And you can also follow us across our social media platform at Zero Conditions Pod. But let's get into greatness. Yep. DJ Neptune. Malga. Before we start this episode, know that you can cause. Oh, this okay. Not I'm guy. not that kind it's of boy. Yeah, this yeah. Is no. I, I, well, I, I would like to disagree about the cleanness because sometimes uh. you be getting into drama. God oh. damn. Oh. But, but I mean, I mean, like he said, I'm a clean guy. I'm not a drama <laughs> guy. But, but you know, sometimes in life, water. drama will find its way I agree. to you. I agree. You know, so that's just how life is. I Village agree. people be always chasing <laughs> I greatness. I mean, I mean, like if Jesus Christ could go through all the things he went through, like who are we? <laughs> you do, get? You, do you know when I knew that DJ Neptune was like, she's not about that life? When I was in uni, when I was in uni, I think I was 100 level or so. So I, I went for an event, something like that, and I saw DJ Neptune. I think he was still like, not as great and as big and as, <laughs> as he is now. But he, of course, he was still fly. You were you were a young person at the time. Yes. And he was still fly. <laughs> so why is she he was, old now? He was a fly young man. <laughs> he, was a, he was a fly young man, and and you know I was on Twitter. I just started using Twitter then. I now because the genetics mention. I think then. Omo, you do Star Wars. Are you joking? <laughs> ah, you no, do for the Don Jazzy. No, not Star you do for DJ. Star Wars is, is crushy. Hey, guys. Don Jazzy is almost. I was looking for work now. You have been. Uh, you, well, you did for somebody else. No, it's Don Jazzy. <laughs> I didn't have that man. It's Don Jazzy and Jeanette. You don't lie, Tolani. And I think I've told Jeanette this story before, have I? No, you have. I'm just hearing this for the first time. Okay, but. But yeah. it's amazing. I want to no, no, that. No, no, just... wait. Wait. <laughs> but you blocked me now on Twitter. <laughs> You just, you just. <laughs> why are you like this? <laughs> no, but why did you, did you have to block your Twitter? Why did you have to block me Twitter? Why did you have to bring that drama? Okay, you okay report yourself. Let me tell you what I did. Report and yourself. I was going to the story. Uh -huh. So I was going on Twitter Let's and I'd be there. like, Let's get there. Did you know, I like you. I have a crush on you. <laughs> Take me. I think then he was just about to get married. I'm like, oh, well, thank you. Thank God for me in your life. Uh uh. You were doing all this on Twitter. Did you mention I like you? <laughs> did, 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 did. Oh, oh my not, God. Not DMO. Mention. I was going to say, let her report herself. Mention. 
Then he you were harassing the man. Suddenly he blocked me. You were harassing him. <laughs> Oh, but God. now, so, but, oh, but now you are complaining about harassment. <laughs> no, 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 no. You were harassing him. I wasn't letting him know my intention. Oh, like, more than any event, but they like it. Oh, they like me. So, can you why can you intentions and buy it? More like any. Guess what? Most of the time, I'm in our marriage. I say, oh, oh, I do be understanding <laughs> because he's big. Like, who is Mama, this girl? Do you, do you know what that says you? What? I, I listened to Mr. Izzy's song recently. What did he say? And I feel the need to bring it up here. What did he say? <laughs> and I'll never cheat. You bad boys who will of never course. cheat. I don't know why Mr. Izzy sang that song, but <laughs> whatever. Like that, the I don't man, know why he sang that song. See, see, see. The man is so focused. No, no, no. He's so focused on his destination that <laughs> any daughter of Jay-Z you understand? Block. <laughs> die by fire. And I'm not even joking. That, that shit literally, years after... I didn't even know to be a radio personality or whatever, or go into media. Oh, so you didn't find out that I blocked you years later? Yeah. So, so, I so when I now, be, I know, when he started popping, I now started to like, let me follow, let me play DJ. Oh, block me. I started thinking about my life that. <laughs> what could have made this man block me? I've never interacted with him. I've forgotten. Ah. I now started that, no, this is oh not normal. Because I don't, I don't boo people on social media. Why would he block me? Remember that where you are abusing stance and. But I wasn't insulting him. I wasn't even like him. The me you have complained. You used to. You ah, this baby. You don't say melody the hot. Yeah. Hot. Like men would be like, oh melody, can I fly you out to Dubai? Uh -uh. But I don't. No, no, no. Uh -uh. Like you will be, you will be, you will be like, what is this? This is just. This is so wrong. Nah, men, I've never said that. Men don't <laughs> know like how to. Tell me as an agenda. Men. Me, you see your life now, <laughs> but that Old should, space that time. should end him, end my like end him my respect. Like oh my god, this is such a stand up person. <laughs> it, was not, it was not years that I now told him. He was he was so surprised that no, I was day. shocked though. Like I remember yeah. I ran into you at the radio station, yeah. you know, and, and was she like, was like, you blocked me. She was very intentional. I mean, I was trying to wave. No, I was trying to wave. You blocked like, me. No, no, no. You didn't, you didn't even say I blocked you. Like, oh, I'm trying to mention you on Twitter. Let me, let me have your phone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I couldn't even escape. She it. was trying to run away. I'm like, no. But I'm and I was not the trying to like, today. have a flashback. Like, so how did it even happen? But I told you the story. Are you now? Yeah, you now remind them. Like, like, ah, I was, I was but, liking but, you. Let's unblock. Let's unblock. Greatness. Greatness. That's what. That's it. First, the first time I met her, I blocked her on Twitter as well. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Yeah. Someone blocked her, I can't give you. Ah, let me tell you that person that was blocked me on Twitter. Who? I just remember now. Who? I think this is the one, the one that you were trying to remember. But I don't know why he blocked me. Who? Ricardo. Yeah! <laughs> Ricardo Baskin. Morati. Morati. Show you unblock it. No, 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 I'm not me. I'm not me. I'm not me. I'm not me. Tell him that you don't block. No, tomorrow, Ricky, I will call you. I'm not me. I'm not me. But you remember that I used to dance with Ricky's song on Instagram. Oh, my man, what happened to that your career? I just I got it. What's it, Dagba? What's it, Lowe's? Uh-uh. What's it, man? When there's money, you know, it becomes soft. Baba, you don't see the way. I just see the gogu. I don't like something when people. Talk about DJ Neptune as yeah. like as this person. You are actually an OG. Oh, in the DJ right? space for real. He is an OG for real, for real. And I feel like a lot of people need to give you your flowers. I feel like a lot of younger people, maybe people that are younger than me, might not know. Hmm. But yeah, from radio, uh, Ray Power, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, um, no, I, I I feel like a lot of people need to understand that. Whatever you're achieving is not because it's not by coincidence. Yeah, it's a result yeah. of grinding and grinding yeah. from way, 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 way back. Yeah. yeah. So we'd like to give people their flowers on this podcast. Thank you. Yes. I'm just trying to mention it. Thank you. Thank um, you. I appreciate I appreciate you. I get I get that sometimes. And um to be honest, like I've never been the show off Actually, kind of guy. Yes. But in terms of the craft, I think I've basically touched every base that needs to be touched from being mm. a radio DJ. Yep. Being a band DJ, like we literally we, started that movement, myself and Nato C, far back as 2007, 2008. That's true. You know, and then now progressing into 
putting my own tracks out together. Shout out to the likes of Uncle Jimmy Jat, yeah, you know, who also Jimmy inspired uh, many DJs like myself. Yeah. You know, but like you said, it's hard work. Yeah. And when people see you today, they think it all started like two years ago. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, <laughs> no, set yourself up. No. And I feel that's why, like, because it hurts me when I see new cats come in. Hmm. And then after like a couple of years, like two, three years, it's like, I'm like there's a lot of work. Yeah. Like me, my goal, I want to be a global DJ, you know? So that's why I'm still Chilla. grinding, yeah. you know? Like, but we're here. Well, we're you're going to do it. Now, yeah. of course, come this I mean, as long as you're working. <laughs> yes. You've come this far, working, you are going to do like, it. There's right. nothing in life that you can't achieve. It's not about there's nothing. You are there. You are doing the work. You are doing I appreciate the work. I appreciate you, you guys. But, but when you say that, you know, younger cats coming into the space and two, three years, it's like, what's going on? And they begin to feel like they are not popping as much as or as loudly as they should. Do you think that's because it is somewhat easier now for people to pop with the with social media with the mm. and with the mm. tools available? So now, if they feel like they're not popping, is it from a place of entitlement or it is okay for them to feel that way? Because now we have social media and people be blowing up from just one song. Um, it's okay for them to feel that way, you know. But in life. Even, I mean, when you give birth to, to a baby, you're not just going to see, see the baby stand up and walk. Yeah. They would crawl for a while, stand, try to get, get their balance, mm -hmm. and then they start walking. Yeah. And that's how this thing is. You have to go through the normal route. Hmm. Sometimes you might bypass the normal route and still get it. And if you're that kind of person, you still need to go back and understand the basics. Because that's what we eventually put you through. And that's why I see guys talk about, oh, I don't understand what's going on. Nobody's trying to work with me like you need to check your attitude your work ethic you know so all of those things but if you don't go through the actual school you might not get the knowledge of these are the things i need to put in place to help propel my career yeah you know so it's 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 that. just what it is i man. hear that but when you started off as a dj i mean we've always had djs in nigeria it's not like especially after hip-hop culture sort of made a lot of things explode in Nigeria. Yeah. DJ culture became a core part of Afrobeats culture. I think I'm permitted to say that. You're right. Um, <clears throat> but when you started, it's not like now when <clears throat> people have now seen DJ Neptune, DJ Jimmy Jazz, of course. Spino. Um, DJ Spino. Like your parents can actually see that there are opportunities in there. Yeah. Um, when you started, what made you... And who are the, who were the people that made you think that you wanted to do this? And were you two-headed questions? Were you scared that you might not achieve the things that you set out to do? Uh, so uh, I I am wired differently. Mm. Um, if I want to do something, and it's not happening at that time, I just believe it's not the right time. Mm. You know, mm. and I let go of it, mm. and eventually creeps back to me. So I'm very very big on time. Yeah. You know, so. Having a flashback to my early days um, in, into my career, yeah. uh, my, my folks were not in support of what I wanted to do. Wow. You know, um, shout out to my dad. May you continue to rest in peace. Right. Being the only son of the house. Oh. <laughs> so you could imagine. <laughs> and very understandable. You understand, very, very. <laughs> you understand the mentality back then, yeah. you know. And I am this guy who's, I'm a very, I'm a, I'm a fast learner. Hmm. I'm very strong-willed. Like, if I want to do something, I would do it. If it doesn't work fine, so be it. We pack our bags. It's life. We yeah. keep it going. Keep going. You know, so um, I wanted, I actually started off trying to be an artist. You know, my dad was like, no way, not under my roof. So I chilled. Where's the okay. sing thing? I said, no problem. In fact, there was this uncle of mine who would come to the house every weekend because he's very good. He's like a choir master at the church. Tried to pull me through voice training and yeah. all of that stuff, yeah. you know, but pops are like, mm -hmm. no. You know, but I was always that kid that after church service, I would go to the musical department, just hum something, play on the drums, just create rhythms that I didn't even know what I was doing as yeah. at that time. Yeah. You know, but so it was the passion yeah. that was pushing me. And inside of me, like, I was burning, like, ah, I want to be an entertainer. I don't know what it's going to be mm. at the end yeah. of the day, but I just knew this was my direction. Mm. You know, and I stood by it. It even cost me leaving my comfort zone hmm. for a couple of years. What, what was your comfort zone? Where did you live? Uh, my comfort zone as at that time, I was staying in Egbeda, in Gowan Estate to be precise. I lived in Gowan Estate. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Phase oh, One Road. Oh, Phase One. Uh, that was very close to, I can't remember the phase number, but I know Phase One, yeah. like 411 and all that. 411, 311, yeah. yeah. Exactly. You know, and 
while I was out there, I kept on reminding myself, you cannot afford to fail. Because mm. the moment you do, you become a laughing stock. Mm. You mm. know? So I literally saw it all while I was on the street. Mm. You know? And I'm grateful to God that I was able <coughs> to stay focused. The passion led me through. And mind you, there was no money involved. Though. Mm. Mm. It was just me doing what I wanted to do so I could stay fulfilled and live my life, you know? And then gradually it started making sense, you know, the name started popping. I got on radio at was 17. I lost my dad when I was 16. Oh. You know, I got on radio like 17, 18, you know, and that just blew me up. Uh, shout out to the late Steve Kadri. You know, so he just put me like I'm putting you on the on the on the national belt. Hmm. So wow. then when I was DJing in Lagos, like the whole of Nigeria was plugged in because Raper FM, like it was literally Raper FM, Rhythm FM. And cool FM as at that time that were like talking it talking out for it being out, the yeah, best, you yeah. know. And from there, I just became a household name. I started getting booked on the island, hmm. you know. And you were still saying going. I was still, st bro. Like, like my mentality there was so strong that, like me, I can never move to the island. Of course. <laughs> but bro, when I'm doing gigs like two, three, four gigs every weekend, I'm, I'm finding myself having to. There was the day I even slept off. Like I was also on traffic light like this. Ooh. But it's so low. I was tired. You know, that was the grind, that was the hustle. And it was, I was happy because then people around me now understood what I was trying to push mm. Mm. in the early stage of my career. And I will always say I'm, I'm grateful to God. Like everything just built up from there. I remember how I linked up with Nato C. It was one of um, the celebration celebration at the, at the shrine in the yeah. Keja. Yeah. And um, I was the DJ. I DJed for literally all the artists that performed from Mohit, to Ikechuku, to Storm Records. You know, back then, like, this were the guys to them, like, Sinzu, Soski, and all of that. And at the end of the night, um, NATO reached out, like, oh, I love how you handled my set. Like, it was so seamless. What year was this? Bro, this was, if I'm not mistaken, I started working with NATO 2008, 2007, so it was around that, that year. Awesome. You know, and that was how NATO just dragged me. And then I started touring with him. We hmm. went across Africa, North America, Europe. And I started getting exposed. Wait, wait. So you left radio by this point? Now, radio had to suffer. Maybe not leave, <laughs> but of course you would. Yeah, so radio, had, that side of me had to suffer. And that's like my primary love because yeah. like, it gives me joy when I'm on radio, I'm DJing. I'm not seeing the people. But yeah. well, you can but, feel the energy. But you can feel the energy. And then yeah. we're getting calls from like Joss, yeah. from Nasarawa, yeah. like, you know, feeling the moment. And that kind of like suffered, you know, but I mean, you know, in life, you need to know when to move on, move on, you yes. know, and then I moved with NATO, you know, um, got to travel, like, have different experience, saw things from a different angle, you know, moving into different territories. And from there, I just started building up, building up, building up. So, like I said, like, you have to crawl, walk before you think of flying. Yeah. What was it like working with NATO? And like, how long were you with him? Um, working with NATO, the, the synergy was right. It was it was beautiful, and I remember being the A and R for his uh, Super C album. Ooh! Yep. But did if you get credit for that? If you go on there, yeah. Okay. So you see, we've been doing these things. Like, it's not I don't make noise. I don't. Bro, <laughs> it's not A and R to your bio. Carry your shoulder. Pass <laughs> <laughs> the carry shoulder. <laughs> you know, and so I, I got a lot of opportunity, and that's when I also met um, Uncle Obi Asika. You know, um, I remember we did they, they did a very huge concert at the Palms that had Asha on there. Okay. You know, I DJ that. Um, when the first time Rick Ross came to Nigeria at Eco mm. Hotel, yeah. I was the DJ for that as well. You don't shit, man. Bro, we know they make noise, but we just did. I like them like that. Like, let the work speak for me. I mean, the name was out there before the face came out. There. Yeah. Yes, And I, I love it. I love it because yes. I could still go about my Your simple business. life. I remember there was this day I went to the market. <laughs> I was pricing meat. <laughs> Our guy was just parabolating behind me. I, I could read his mind like, no, it can't be this guy. Like, <laughs> no, it's not possible. Wait, what market was this? Jack on the market. <laughs> it can't be this guy. Like, this guy was not walking so slow. He came behind me and I said, Neptune. That, that's, still, that's, that's a very respectful I still guy. didn't turn because I knew if I turned, you like, ah, we'll get here. Oh, yeah, you too, you too. What, what made you feel like well, I want to be able to live my normal life. But what year was this? Um, this should be about like 2014, 2015. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, 2014, you 2015. Now. You know, but, you, but you, know, you know what I did? <laughs> when I was done with my transaction <laughs> and I was leaving, 
he, he was close to the gate. Yeah. So I walked past him. He still whispered Neptune. That's a good so thing. So I walked I past the gate. I'm respectful guy. I now turned back and I just... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> naive. <laughs> naive. I was gone. <laughs> like... I was gone. But what was that, that, that idea of quote and unquote stardom? Do you feel like... Do you feel like it puts people in a cage if they are not careful? Yes, it does. It's like, fame is a bitch. And mm. one thing I tell people who are in whatever business they do, pray to God for the grace to control the fame he has given to you. Mm. Or, or whichever way you, you attain the fame. Because it messes with your psychology. All of a sudden, you feel you've arrived. Yep. You're flocking with babes. Security is guiding you. Clean the road. You get me? But those things don't last forever. Yep. While you have it, you're going to meet with people. You're going to work with people, respect them, create good, healthy relationship. Hmm. So when you're not, quote unquote, In not like you won't be popping, but I mean, it's just life. At some points, I would take it back. Yeah. <laughs> Either I like it or not. Yeah. But when I'm not there, what would sustain me? Yep. The relationship I've made with people, how yep. I've treated people, yeah. and all of that stuff. You know, so that's one thing I tell some of my colleagues sometimes when we're having the discussion. Like, guy, like, how are you doing it? Like, you, you, you work. You literally have like maybe like you work with competitive brands. You're doing this at the same time. You're doing you know, like you just need to understand how to manage people, people, and manage your, your affairs. Don't, don't, because if I'm paying you money to render a service. I want to pay you that money and go to bed. Mm. Not pay you that money and be, be managing you. And be managing you. Micromanaging you. Know, you. So sometimes some people can suck up to your madness. You know, but the moment you're not on the scene, like you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you know. But at the same time, though, it's it's also tell fame allows you to understand where you might might be able to tell you where you are so that you also need to act according to where you are. Yeah. Because sometimes you tend to, people, if you are humble, you tend to underrate like where you are, underestimate it. And fame can give you like a reset, like a sensory reset. But I, you know, you can't be, you might not be able to do that anymore. Yeah. And be, not just because it's wrong to, to do, to do like enjoy your life or be able to go to the markets, but because human beings are fucking crazy. Sure. You understand? <laughs> like, I don't think everybody remembers this situation where Banky W was buying something. Like six or yeah, seven years. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember. remember shit? I remember, I think it had to do with the car. He yeah, or something. he was driving a 2010 Range Rover. Mm -hmm. And that was how someone went to record him and said, ah, ah, he's even broke, Seth. He's driving a 2010 Range Rover. I posted it on social media. On Twitter. Have you forgotten this? I remember, I remember, I remember. I don't think I remember. I remember. Was it, it was a Range Rover. Yeah, it was a Range Rover, 2010. How can you be broke driving a Range Rover? Do you know Rover? how much 2010 Range Rover was like, in 2010? Like, you understand. Che, you were really worry. Bro. That was like 100K, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. John, you have definitely mistaken. Hundred k that time, close No, hundred thousand dollars. I know, but how? Really? But I don't know, Sha. I'm sorry. <laughs> to see what I drive, so let's not. Do that. <laughs> just to see what I drive. Look at this. Look at this big woman. Let's not do yeah, that. Yeah, I drive. <laughs> I'm not this gonna. Is, how do you see the feet? You understand? Um, <laughs> see that? Look at the stickers. It's not about the. It's how people you want people. People wear one line of anklets. Your own anklet, they get like six lines. So are you okay? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But I, I, I genuinely think that. So I, was, I saw an interview that Adele did. She has done a couple of interviews over the, over the years where she has said countless times how much she hates being famous. How that's her least favorite thing. You don't believe it? But I, she don't says, like, I don't like when people say that. But why? I think, did you never, I think it's a little dishonest. Do you get, I think people say it because they want people to understand. If you don't want to be mm. famous, then don't be famous. So, 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 I, so, so I, would, I would agree and I'll I would also disagree. Yeah. I would disagree in the sense that sometimes, right, some people don't even understand what they are coming into. Yes. Mm. You get me? And if you don't have the ability to control yourself, like I'll use myself as an example. I think my being humble sort of like also gives me a hard reset, you know? Not like I've ever gone over, but like, oh, yes, I am. The, nah, yeah. I don't even like, 
Yeah. But I feel like me being humble just kind of like helps me control that level of, you know, sometimes like I've even met people like when they're coming into the industry, you see them, they not like they stock up too, but yeah. they want to like, Bro. Yeah. and then when they get to a certain level, you know, you now <laughs> see them like, even the way they will carry their shoulder, you, you think you think, you think they fly a plane or something. Wait, do they do that to you as an yes. audience? Yes. Yeah, human beings are yeah, are No, crazy. do you know why I say that? Because that one I would understand that as a person that used to work on radio, when artists are like really upcoming to bring their CD and be on board, my guy, my guy. Once they blow like this, that's the oh. thing. They only come to you because they know they yes. they want something. They need you. But that's not being original. Yeah. You get me because some people are vulnerable. Like, okay, yeah, you've gotten what you want, especially when you now maybe need them for like tiny favors, favors, and mm -hmm. then they now turn their back. And you're looking at yourself like, bruh, have you forgotten so soon? Yeah, you know. But life is that's very, human being. That's human being. But life is very funny. Yeah. I, I feel that's why they say thank God, say man, no be God. Facts. Because <laughs> yep. yep. life has a way of resetting Bringing you by itself. Back. <laughs> Are you joking? Yeah. Like, that thing has happened... Full circle. It has happened to me... Let me tell you something. It has happened to me countless times with, like, people doing it to me. But I can't also lie that I've not found myself in places where I also did it to people. Yeah, Do you understand? I understand. Where maybe someone needs your favor. It's not always a favor from you. You don't... You, it's, it's not like you did it intentional. Maybe it escaped your mind and then you know, it's something. <laughs> it actually happens. It does it happens, happen. It happens. It, it happens. does happen. It but happens. I, I, but I also feel like the stardom or the fame that comes with as an outsider that comes with music or whatever can be very fleeting. I think that sometimes artists think that it is forever. That's the thing. That's the thing. I think, I think it can be that's very the fleeting. They feel like they feel like it's forever. Sorry to cut you, Shan. Yes, I feel that's why on. some of them, while they are at their peak, they don't save up their money. Mm -hmm. They don't invest because they feel. I was with somebody the other day. They're like, all oh, these artists, when does they collect advance? They collect advance. They go go tear bands. You carry and you know that your future. They drive. They go so like you're not investing. You're literally driving your future. Hmm. You you get me? That's when they said that. I, I had a had reset about like this is deep actually, you know. And that's why I tell some of my colleagues like, listen, while you're on top. Invest your money. Oh. If it's properties you want to do, if you just have something on the side, because bro, this shit is not. It's very few of us that has the grace just to be in the game time. for maybe more than five, ten years, hmm. because it's just normal. Like you're you're, you're cutting across to a certain age group, younger. and if you don't know just when younger. to switch and tone down some things and still be in business, you just miss your way. And by the time you realize, time is not on your it's side fast. anymore. You know? So how do you now sustain yourself? No more. So it's, it's deeper than what, because you see people and they say, oh, man, I want to be famous. Say, Baba, just put me on track. I want, if you blow, you know what you they enter. Are you prepared for what you're coming into? Have you, have you had people sit you down and advise you and like tell you? That's why I always take people like Jimmy Jat as my role model. OG. Because I've seen the life he lived. Mm. He's still living. Yeah. Mm. He will still live long. Mm. He's inspired millions of us everybody either we like it or not directly or indirectly indirectly yeah exactly and he also had his own pairs during his own time so it wasn't like they didn't do their bit just yeah. but it's just how god blessed him yeah. you know so if you see a man like that and you're not trying to move i mean you don't have to be his friend or something but like move close to him on the study some knowledge. things like the day i had a personal encounter encounter with uncle jimmy was in new york when was this this was 2008. I was nominated for Nigerian Entertainment Awards. That's NEA. NEA. Uh, myself, DJ Humility. Shout out to Humility. He won, Humility. he won that year. That's and the year Humility. after, I won. And then myself and Uncle Jimmy, we now ran into each other in New Jersey. We flew on the same flight, Virgin Atlantic, I remember, back to Lagos. So the moment I saw him, I just carried myself. I went to go sit beside him. Like, you know, I was picking his brain. And then he said something to me like, I've been watching you. Hmm. I just want you to know you're on the right path. Hmm. Just stay Mental focused, work. you know. And then he gave me some advice, you know. And bro, that those things are still in my head, you know. So those are the people you want to emulate. Don't just be in your corner and you feel like you've you have everything figured. The world evolves around you, and no, 
you still need to understand some certain things, you know, and I feel that's where some of us get it wrong, yeah. you know, but... So, can I ask a personal question? So, when you were about to stop working with Neto, was it a natural transition, thing, transition or was there a conversation about it? Because that was a moment that helped you advance in your career. Yeah. Um, so, with myself and NATO, um, we still have a very healthy conversation, like healthy relationship, rather. Yeah. We still spoke like a couple of months ago. Yeah. And, I mean, you know life, like you, you evolve. So, NATO got married, Yeah. you know, yeah. and it seemed like, I won't say he didn't want to do the music thing anymore, you know, but I, I mean, marriage comes with a lot of responsibilities, yep. Yep. you know, and me as a sharp guy at that time, I just <laughs> knew, okay, yes. You don't lay all your eggs in one, one basket. Baskets. Like, yeah, we get on the road week in, week out, you know. But before then, I've had my shit going. Yeah. I was doing my private gigs, my corporate gigs, and all of that stuff. You know, so I just gradually went back into that shell, and I was still, you know. So um, if NATO calls me tomorrow and say, Neptune, I have a booking somewhere, I need you to come. You we, will pull up. We get, of course. But do you still work with him now? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's not like we ever sat down and said, you know what? Um, I don't think I want to do music. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be performing yeah. that much anymore. You know, so maybe you might just want to. But I just knew, okay, it's time. Uh, it's time. time for me. So that's why, like, in, like with life, you need to understand time and season. Time and season. You went to make that switch. So as a DJ, right? And if you are working with when you were working with an artist, it's not like now when things are a little more structured. Yeah. Right. When DJs were working with artists back in the 2000s, what was the payment structure like? Um, so my, with myself and NATO, because I, I can only use myself an, as an yeah. example, yeah. Um, we had a conversation. So how do you want to get paid? After mm. every gig or on the, on the monthly, whatever. Yeah. And for me, <coughs> I was already playing a lot of gigs as yeah. at that time. Yeah. So the conversation was... How much were you collecting at the time? I think as at that time, I was probably already doing like a million. Wow. I'm sorry, yeah. with what? Sorry. As at 2008. Why is everybody opening their mouth? Like, <laughs> making money for a long Wait, time. Wait, so are you saying like, sorry, you. please, I'm sorry. You mean like for one gig, one million? Yeah. 2008, one million. Wait, I'm sorry. Wait. No, because I mean like, you don't understand as DJs, right? And this yeah. is, I would love for people to really understand some certain things like, yeah? our equipments are not cheap. Yeah. They don't come cheap. Sorry. So 20, 2020. 2020. <laughs> I think, calm down. I was like, Wait. what? 2024. But in 2024 now. Yeah. I heard 2008, yeah. You are collecting millions. Ah. Uh -uh. uh -huh. For one. We, like, is it that we didn't deserve it? No, I'm just wondering. Uh, ah, now to intern, I beg. At uh, this year, you with this year. No, 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 but, no, wait. No, I'm actually dead serious. I used to think maybe that they earn like. Thousands. No, like millions now. Not then. Yeah, DJs were in there. Do you know how much DJ Jimmy Jazz was charging char char there? No, what? Yeah. People have been making bads. Well, but even no, no, me, I am shocked. I'm extremely shocked. Big man thing, in it? One million then. Yeah, Please. because I mean, okay, so not not just for performance though, because yeah. then I still have to bring the sound. Of course, yeah. I understand. Like the but top still, package, it's but a lot still, of that's a lot. <laughs> These guys say still. That's <laughs> still a lot still. of money. Oh, you didn't want to know when I received soft million first time. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want me. <laughs> no, 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 no. But still, that was that's that's like int that's, that's incredible. That's shit. profound, though. That's yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean we'll, so that we'll, was that knife. Want to book the name too? No, oh. don't don't. Did you say I'm? Not in this economy. Did you say I'm sure you have rider? Of course, I mean, I should have, no, no. International DJ. No, you should have a right. It's not even about being international now. You should have a rider. So this is another thing that hinders a lot of, uh, or make make our clients have a lot of issues in this in this side of the world, yeah. right? You book me, you tell me, oh, my event starts at six p.m. Yeah. To twelve, I get there by four p.m. Set up everything, right? At six, your event is still dragging, and it probably doesn't start proper like nine p.m. And then at 12, I need to move because I have, I have another booking somewhere else. And then I'm trying to move. And you're looking at me like, no, nah, Baba, don't do that now. You can see my audience now. You didn't pay me for extra time. Someone has paid me to be somewhere maybe from 12.30 to 4 a.m. Yeah. You know, and then when you're trying to leave, some people think, oh, why is he arrogant? Is it that he, he, he does, like... It's not arrogance. It's, it's not arrogance. It's business, <laughs> you know? But do you have to deal with that, that kind of thing? Like, on the yeah, it happens sometimes. But then again, 
I also understand the environment that you are in. That we're in. in. You get me? People don't turn up on time. Yep. There might be traffic on the road. Yep. People don't plan ahead. You see, like abroad, you see an artist put out information, X, Y, Z, and performing somewhere. And then like two, three weeks, you see like friends, oh, Shadi, are we going to? Oh, yeah, okay, I have to call off work. Like they plan. Yeah. You know, but here, I don't think we really last have minute. that culture. Last yeah. minute, my, my, what am I going to do? Ah, I've not even bought my ticket. Ah, you know. Yeah. And so for me, I put all of that into consideration. I'm yeah. like, okay, let's let's keep let's keep we'll, we'll patch it till we eventually get it right at this point. <laughs> but as an OG and as someone who has been in the industry for a minute, you you were on the road with NATO for a while. Yeah. You know, going on the road, going on tour. I was also on the road with Timaya at some point. Yeah. And also then the I was road. also on the road with Olu Maintain at some point. In fact, I think <laughs> was it Olu Maintain before NATO? No, I because I remember there was one time too. Akon was in Nigeria and then they had that show around that freedom way, like where you have that very big industrial space. It was, um, what was the name of this man that used to have events then? Uh, Unduka. I'm forgotten. I'm, Fine, you should know this. I'm trying to remember the first name, but I think the last. Unduk, Unduka. I know the guy you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, like he's a bit, yeah. I know the Kosi Unduka. Uh, no, it's not Kosi. It's, it's, uh, I can't remember anyway, you know, the person you know, so I've, I've also DJed for some other artists on, 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 on the, the side road. as well, yeah. And as someone who has spoken about, oh, you're very intentional about living a, a very simple life, just as someone who speaks about having his priorities right, I saw some, you know how they say that the fast life when you're an artist, when you're on the road, people have to do certain things, so you have to, you know, you have to drink, you have to do this, you have to do that to stay sane, to stay in the, to get your brain right, to, yeah. be able to have all that energy. Yeah. How did you stay in the midst of all of that and still set your head straight? Wait, I'm assuming. You don't drink? Um, I do when necessary, but not like drink to. Do you have any I vice? I can't control like myself. Do I have any vice? vice. No, 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 no. So how are you able to go through that life and still be this person? I mean, it's because I constantly remind myself that I want to live a sane life. So mm. I'm not the type to get intoxicated before I can function. Mm. Mm. I don't need to... Don't give inspiration. I, no, God, that God, they give me inspiration. I don't need leave <laughs> or, or mixed uh, chemicals to give me inspiration. You know, I just go in, do what I want. But you know, sometimes it charges you up. Yeah. So let me not lie. Yeah. Mm. You know, it sets a certain mood. But I feel when you make that like a priority, yeah. it becomes a problem. Yeah. Because it becomes when an you... Addiction. Like, Exactly, that's what I was about to say. Like when you do something over and over, and it becomes an addition, and then you just stuck to it, and then you find yourself not being able to de detach from it, and yeah. you know, which I I don't really advise is is a good thing. But, uh. How much of a shock is it for you to see DJs in the digital era, like to see like the amount of one opportunities, to see how relatively easier it looks. And to see the people that are blowing up like that, how does it look to you? I mean, it feels good. I'll be honest with you. Because life is stage by stage. Mm -hmm. We're in the digital stage now. Listen, no. And you need to utilize it well to your advantage. If we, or if I say, if I had all of this opportunity during my time, I would have been far gone. Mm -hmm. But you know what I was doing? I was Grinding. still far gone. I was ahead. Grinding. Now, let me take you Any back. Any million 2008. <laughs> this guy. Let me take you back to when I was on radio, on Rapa FM. Then I told myself, because online radio wasn't really a thing. Yeah. It was yeah. just still like the band, you know. So I told myself, okay, within the walls of the radio station and people listening to me on radio, there are people abroad in diaspora who probably wants to have a taste of field of, of yeah. DJ Neptune. Yeah. What do I do? You know? Then the cyber cafe that was you have what's locked. There's I mean, yeah, there's internet, but it's yeah. it's luxury. Yeah. You know? So I would go do research and all of that. Then I started putting out mixtapes. I opened yeah. MySpace. Shout out to MySpace. <laughs> all the music is lost now. Fuck MySpace, by <laughs> the way. Nah, fuck MySpace. You say now fuck MySpace. <laughs> you know, so I would do those mixes and then I would upload it online. Yeah. And then I was getting traction, hmm. traction from there, you know. So I was already thinking ahead, you know. So that was why I said, if 
what is on ground now was in place then, yeah. I think I would have been far gone, you know? Mm. So, but shout out to the new kids. Um, they're doing amazingly well. With technology now, you can tweak some things. You can do some ojuru yep. and still sound cool, yeah. which now mm. is now seen as creativity. Yep. As compared to You're back grinding. in the days, it has to be manual. Yep. Mm. So it's not the same now. It's not the it's same. Not really the, I, Technological advancement. Why do you think I have muscles? Like, I carry turn table, <laughs> heavy turn <table>, like. <laughs> Ooh. We've been working out before people start thinking you are working out, bro. Whoa. Like when you have to carry like heavy SL Technics turntable, <laughs> you have tons of record, LP records, not CD. Because from LP records, we now advance yeah. to CDs. Yeah. And then from CDs to pen drives. Yeah. From pen drives, just now having songs on your laptop. And you can easily download all yeah. of this stuff. You know, yeah. so you have to carry turntables, you have to carry speaker, you have to still carry record. And for you to play a party of like five, six hours, you probably need a minimum of like 100 to 120 records. Yeah. Ooh. So all of this is weight. I have an idea to share with DJ Dempsey that can make the two of us money. So please, money. Oh, please, we are money by money. And you I need to, you you get your 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 of course, <laughs> it's a tech idea. Immediately, I see him carrying into the corner and I'm following him. <laughs> I need to hear money. Tech enabled. Tech enabled. So that Apple Music can come and buy us for like two billion in like two years. So That's like the way forward, years, bro. Or seven years. That's the way forward. Marshall. I'll discuss it. All right, cool. Anyway. I'm following you. She placed herself in her. Are you joking? <laughs> like, I feel you, my sister. I can't be there. Every cover in hmm. this economy is necessary. Hey. <laughs> Tony, you want to say something? Or yeah, she, okay. yeah, yeah, I wanted to say something. I wanted to ask a question. Yeah. So back in the day, right? Alaba, Alaba mixes. Yeah. Um, were you guys getting? Were you getting paid for that? Did you get? Did you ever get paid? For okay. Alaba so mixes? I never did like the Alaba mixes. But what I did in terms of creating mixes was working with some corporate brand. So I remember back then when BlackBerry was trying to sell two of their models, models into the industry. I that. So um, someone reached out to me. What did like, you have to do with your money, don't they? Are you joking? <laughs> Black hats. I don't understand this. Would like, you banter? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, so they reached ha. out to me like, okay, so we have a brand. We're trying to create something around music, mm. around like talent. What can you bring to the table? You know, so I was like, okay, I can bring my creativity to the table, make a mixtape that would go on radio. So instead of you just going to the radio stations, to buying ad slots and just have someone talk, give you features about in the mixtape, in the mix, we embed all these conversations. So it's more fun, more interactive. I mean, imagine you're listening to a sponsored 15 minutes Se uh, segment that yeah. has a DJ Neptune mix and you're getting information of what it's been you sold. You stay now. Yeah. You stay. You know, so that was beautiful. You know, then I also did something similar for MTN when coloring back tone was, was the thing. That's right. That's you know, right. so ah, we did official God. mixes and then put... Have some the money, yo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to MTN. Shout out to Mr. Larry as at that time. Ooh. You know, so so I didn't really go the Alaba mix route, yeah. but I was I was on like that corporate space yeah. with with mixes. I remember a mixtape that I heard. I I, I no, I did buy it. I, it was give my dad. My dad used to head the radio to head the radio station, and there was this mix that came, I I grew up in Accra, so oh, nice. there was this mix that got to that radio station, and the first song of that mix was In Only Save It Was the Nobody You were the one that did it. I think it was oh. a glow mixtape. I can't remember. No, MTN. Can't that would be an MTN mix. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, the, that was part of the mix, yeah. yeah. So, like, it was <laughs> Thina style, like, it was about 10 tracks. So, mm. you can know it was very classic. This man not a brand itself. Uh, like bro! <laughs> but now, so, I have a question. It's like, for both of you, right? Yeah. This is just honest. Yeah. One thing that I know that um, I'm asking you guys to tell me what yeah. you think, right? In the Afrobeat space, there's, there are different conversations about the globalization of Afrobeat. And some people are of the opinion that our music is now penetrating different places, different countries. We have foreigners that are not Nigerians doing Afrobeat. <laughs> we have like different people that are not Africans, especially Africans yeah. doing Afrobeat. And there's a conversation around how these people might come and take our sound. Yeah. And it's like we have to get keep it, we have to protect our stuff and all of that. That's a conversation that yeah. we are having in our space. Yeah. But we also have like DJs who are Nigerians that call themselves like I'm a piano DJs. Mm -hmm. Or like they primarily like position themselves as, as I'm, a piano I'm a piano DJs. 
why are we mad that foreigners are <laughs> doing that? <laughs> no, but seriously. The way we now have like foreigners who are like calling themselves Afrobeat DJs. Why are Afrobeat we mad? artists. Afrobeat artists or Afrobeat DJs. Like maybe like a foreigner being an Afrobeat DJ. Why is that a bad thing when we also do the same? I feel like it's like how black people be like white people are racist. They are not there. But when we do things, we I think we feel we like do, we are, we try we are to minority. Is it wrong? I'm genu genuinely asking, like, is it wrong for us mm. to have like DJs that are of Nigerian descent <laughs> doing I'm a piano. I'm a piano. Is it wrong for foreigners or white choo, people? Choo, 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 choo. <laughs> I mean, uh, you should come back. You want to go first? I don't so, know, I think you so, should go. So first. is it wrong to have like like as a DJ, do you feel the type of way when you see foreigners say they are Afrobeat DJs? And when you see like Nigerians say they are my piano DJs or hip hop DJs or whatever, like um, so to be honest, to be very honest. How does it make you feel? I don't think anybody should feel a certain way. Because first, let's establish this. Music is a universal language. Regardless of what, what of whatever genre. See this one. <laughs> be it reggae, <laughs> be it EDM, be it house, afro house, I'm a piano, afro beat, hip hop, whatever it is. Now, back in the days before Afro beat started popping up. DJs like myself, or even DJs before myself, what were they playing? Hip hop, R and B, facts, hmm. facts only. Now this is music, mainly from the Western world. Mainly, you said we borrow them. You get me, but people need to get entertained. So it's now about entertaining the people, and in in, in the process of entertaining the people, you will work with whatever is made available. Hmm. Now that Afrobeat is popping. And then somewhere in in Asia, in Indonesia or some because funny, funny funny enough, I I I, I had a, a tour in Asia like You had a tour in Asia? Yeah, yeah, like two months like yeah, two months ago in June. I did Bali. Did you Neptune tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did Bali, I did Malaysia, then I did five cities in China. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and while I was on the road, you know, I saw a lot of white kids playing Afrobeat. Playing on my piano, playing it well. And they're dancing the dance. And people are dancing. So it's about people having a good time now, not about uh, it's not their sound. Why are they playing Culture it? Culture vulture. Yeah. So if any African DJ or a Nigerian DJ feels like, okay, Afrobeat is my core business, but I want to be I'm seen as an I'm a piano DJ, so be it. There is an audience for that market. You know, it should, so it shouldn't be. A, it shouldn't even be a conversation. Hmm. The conversation should be you as an African DJ that wants to eventually become a global DJ. Learn how to play music that you are, that are not relatively your style of music. So when hmm. people are having festival and they want to book an Afrobeat DJ, and they be like, okay, so what other Genre, genre are you good at and you say oh i can do afro house i can do i'm a piano i can do edm i can do bashment it ups your like it makes the conversation interesting oh, yeah you get me so i understand the feelings to be like oh why is the, a white man and afro beat yeah DJ? and it, and to be honest it kind of like also limits the business for some of us I because guess. then and this is the trick about hmm. being a dj and the difference with being an artist. Mm. So as an artist, there's only one voice. Mm. So regardless of whatever it is, the yeah, promoter fine. is ready to suck up to whatever bullshit the artist or their management is training at them because they need that one artist. Mm. But now as a DJ, and I advise my colleagues, like you need to be Diversified. technical about how you handle your business because the moment you're trying to act difficult and unavailable, they will move to the next mm. DJ. And if that next DJ, God bless him, kills the show, automatically you've it killed so many that, chances yeah. for you to probably maybe get a call or a text from mm. that promoter. You know, so now if a promoter is somewhere in 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 Europe and he wants a big name and he looks at all the logistics involved yeah, and be like, Oh, I might Carlson not be able to yeah. afford Neptune for my festival. But I have um Steven who's equally as good as Neptune, maybe not, not as, as popular good. as Neptune, you get me. He would still hold the night down. Just go on. You know? That's it. That's it. So it's it's a very dicey conversation, but there's a lot of technicality involved, and you just there's no hard feelings. Just do 
yourself a favor by working more on yourself so you can be in the conversation. Period. DJ Neptune. Very mindful. Very demure. Very, demure. <laughs> very cute thing. This demure talk. You know, I'm just catching up with it. <laughs> very cute Like, thing. very mindful. Like, the perspective that really fucked me up was the perspective about the differences between an artist and a DJ. Like, the capabilities, the limitations, um, the opportunities, and the limitations and the opportunities. I think that's a very peculiar that's why, part that's of why the conversation. That's why I constantly remind myself, in as much as I put out music now, I have smash records that are as big as songs from some A-listers. Mm -hmm. Primarily, I can never be an artist. Mm. I can perform my songs at my gig, uh, at my shows, but mm. I constantly remind myself mm. not to start thinking I want to live the life mm. that an artist would live. Because mm. I feel that's, that's the primary fallout first. Mm. <laughs> You know, so you have to be able to strike the balance between both. What is it for you, um, Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to go on a break. Um, thank you for hanging with us and rocking with us. But don't be panicking. You know, <laughs> the show continues. Yes. You can catch us. Anything you miss, it's going to be out on Monday across all streaming platforms. Yep. This show is still brought to you by Shivers Rigo and Pop Central TV, Channel 189 on GS TV. And we're still hanging with greatness. Woo! Mm, no, greatness! We're in the building. We're in the building. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We're here tonight. I remember the first time, like, that that thing hits me. Like, aside from, like, I think I think it was said on, I think that was the first time I heard it, if I'm not mistaken. F featuring Olamide and Stoneboy. They don't know. That's a jam. Uh, 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 shout out to Olami, shout out to Boy, shout out to Stone Boy. That's a jam. Shout out to Badu. I think I was seven when that one came out. Abba. That was what, like, how can you be seven? Did you say seven? Seven, seven. I was doing NYS. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I thought you said I was seven when I was like, oh my God, are you winding me? And that's how, like, the other two was like, ah, 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 about the song? No, about like what I said. Everything I, I could say. Yeah, I said it already. Everything I could say. The only thing I want to say is... So that culture vulture conversation should be dead and buried. On arrival? Um, the, one, the one reason that's making me not make absolute statements is what he just said about DJs. The yeah. difference in opportunities between artists. I think that's a very valid thing yeah. for artists. But I also need people to understand that if you're good, you are going to get opportunities. He's not struggling for opportunities. Standard. You need to find a way to stand out. Um, your opportunities will come to you. And I, I also need people to understand that you can't get all the opportunities in the world. Yes, you can't I get agree. All the opportunities. That's very key. Yeah. That's very, very yeah. key. And that's where people feel so entitled. Yeah. When some things don't come, they're like, ah, but that guy is not as hot as I am now. Yeah. Is that's his destiny? You and call your destiny. Of, like ego. Like, why do you think that person is not as? And I feel that's where people go about trying to knock other people mm. up. Hustle. Like Hustle me, down, you I cannot think. knock me off. Oh. The one Good God job. has blessed me with will come my way. Facts. If I don't DJ today, it doesn't mean I won't DJ tomorrow. Yeah. A lot of people are celebrating. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A lot of us we get booked. Yeah. Work on yourself so you can be in the conversation. Yeah. Because you're trying to knock people off. Yeah. You are not good. Yeah. So all that gets keeping is maybe from a place of fear mongering. Is it from a place of insecurities as well? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen the Geneva to a fight scene online? <laughs> Greatness! But the Geneva, as someone who has like done music over time with the OGs, you've been in the Neto C era, you are still in the King Maddy era, your new album has King Maddy, yeah. worked with different artists. Yeah. What's the difference with making music with those guys, character wise, attitude wise, and the new guys? Um, character wise, attitude wise, attitude like. wise. So you can't really place these things because character and attitude depends on an individual. Yep. So you might want to look at oh, when I worked with X Y Z at that time, he was giving carrying shoulder. You work with uh, ABC at this time. 
it will carry shoulder. Yeah, okay. You can work with someone then who was very humble yeah. and you work. So it's about the individual. It's mm. not about... But for me, when I'm working, I don't look at the character. I don't look at your... I don't care. I'm I'm up to I'm up to something. In my rubber, Nico. So if it's if it's not working as like right now, it will eventually work in the future. So I don't put myself under any unnecessary pressure. Yes. Um so I want to talk about the concept of like marketing a song. Why are DJs in this market? Um about the moments where people feel like the DJ route can help their song get bigger. It feels like it's not been as rampant these days as it used to be. It's not been as common these days. What do you think has changed about the landscape that's making that happen? Um, what I would say probably changed is the constant ev uh, um, involvement of newer technology. Hmm new tools available in front of you to utilize and literally start building your own audience and your own crowd. But you still cannot completely rule out the fact that DJs play a key role in blowing up songs, in giving songs different energy and different vibe. Because when you create the record, right, and the consumers are consuming the record, it's just one vibe and energy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the music is good, it's lovely, they love it. But when the DJ handles that song, they bring in their creativity. They mix the songs with songs you never ever would have thought can would even align with that record. And it just gives you a different experience that you now hold on to and now want to make you fall back to listening to the song. Yeah. And then still reminiscing on what the DJ Neptune did during his live performance. And mind you, there are billions of DJs around yeah, the world. Yeah. So if everyone is bringing their different flavor into the record, giving people a different experience, it just further gives your record a longer span. Yeah. You know, so you cannot even, that's not even an argument, regardless of whatever facility or, or tool or app that we have, in, like, literally in front of us these days, yeah. you know. But shout out to everyone grinding, man. I want to rave about greatness too. Okay. Thought that was a very good album. Thank you. I really love that album. Thank you so much. You know my favorite song on it? The song with Angela. Mm. Why that song? I love it. You should listen to, you should listen to it again. Mm. It is a brilliant song. Mm. Hmm. Now you really, you really, con went no, you really no, consumed. No, 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 for no. you to mention it the really really Angela song. It's yeah. a great song. Yeah. You that song. So brilliant, mm. Angela. Like it's an incredible. So, so, so for me, right? Like when I'm creating music, and like with this project, I was very, very intentional. Yeah, I'm That's not. Greatness three. three. Yeah, greatness three. I don't. I'm not trying to no disrespect the big, the big guns and all of that. I've worked with some of them. They will always be my friend. I will still work, yeah. but I'm very particular about the end product. Yeah. So it's not even about, I, I want to work with this guy because he's way up there so I can Streaming gain more number. popularity. Stream. I'm all about authentic music that even five, ten years down the line, yeah. people will still relate to it and be like, you see how you mentioned yeah. Baddest, well, let me do budge. Yep. That record will forever stand out. Yes. You get me? Records like Nobody with Joe Boy and Mr. Easy. Oh, we'll get there. That's going to be like, the gongwa sauce that we love now that when I it it's Max. like a party starter when it's being played like a proper throwback yeah you know so it gives me joy when i because that's those are the kind of record i want to create i don't want to create records that is just for one month two months and then it falls off and people move on to the next so i'm yeah. very particular so it's not about like i said quote unquote who i'm working with it's about what we are creating the, the standard the quality that i'm very key on that um, ladies and gentlemen, so that thought. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Um, still with DJ Neptune. If you are here, ladies and gentlemen, you know what, what I'm about to say. Episode is still brought to you by Shiva's Rigo. Buy yourself a bottle of Shiva's Rigo XV. Even though we're drinking 12 on this episode, we're bringing 18 on the next episode. Just so you know. I want to have some. Um, oh! Whoa! Greatness! Greatness! <laughs> <laughs> I really like the twelve, so I think you should have it actually. <laughs> you know, I, I mess with Chivas, oh, yeah, yeah, 
That's nice. I've dusted off Afro. Shout sh- 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 out to the family. Yeah. Up a shivers wriggle. Um, so I want to talk about magic sticks. Ooh, that's my boy. I know, I know. Magic. I know. <laughs> magic sticks, I don't really think a lot of people know this, but you were one of the first people that, that he worked with that produced some very popular and slash hit records with. Yes. People don't know this. Yes. It's I didn't some, know this. You didn't know this? No. Yeah, some it's, people don't. Some people, people don't. know him. Yeah. Yeah. People used to know him as the Neptune's producer. Yeah. yeah. When you hear tune into the sounds oh, and rhythm so and blues, oh, yeah. 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 that's magic sticks. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the longest, like I, const- I was always... Uh, telling people when they type me on social media, like, yeah. oh, tune it. I said, no, I would mention, I said, that's the guy. Yeah. You know, so shout out to Majestics. Um, how did I meet Majestics? Shout out to JP Zoo. Shout out to JP Zoo. Yes. As I remember, I was having a session with JP Zoo as, as at that time, and Magic was still with JP Zoo. Hmm. You know, so that's I'm why working I Working for JP Zoo. Working for JP Zoo. So that's why I met him at JP Zoo's house. Where was this? Where was JP's house at the time? Somewhere on the island. Okay. Yeah, okay. Somewhere on the island. I don't want to mention it, but yeah, somewhere yeah, on the sure, island. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I, because me, I study people a lot. Like, I don't need to talk to you. When I walk into some, I don't need to talk to anybody, but I know this one, Uri, you bet your head will correct. Yeah. This one goes Sabi carry shoulder. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, I, energy. so I know who to relate with. So when I saw him, like, I, I felt the hunger. It, like, mm-hmm. it literally reminded me of Yourself. my days of grinding. You know, and then we exchanged contacts. We started talking. We would reach out sometimes. I would reach out to him. And then gradually, gradually, we built that bond and relationship. And then we started working. Hmm. I saw the potentials. Hmm. Like, this boy is going to go for What year was this? This was 2016, 2017. Hmm. You know? So my first album, 2018, yeah. he produced on that. Hmm. You know? Hmm. Moved to the second album. A couple of uh, singles that I released... And it's so funny. Yeah. I don't want to mention names, but some yeah. of the big dogs that he's worked with now, aside from Ashake, yeah. I sent big pack to all of them. They said no. I said, listen to this. I've got this crazy kid. He has his sound. They said no. Not like they said no directly because, I mean, everybody has their, their own, own per- life and yeah. all of that stuff. But the past. You know? But life, again, to me, like I said earlier, it's all about time. Time. You know? I sent people, oh, yeah, it's dope, it's dope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it gives me joy. So now see them. <laughs> when I see him, I'm producing, well, I'm like, that's my boy, you know? <laughs> and, and, and the sweet thing about this conversation is I'm even happy you asked because when, yeah. like, he took off proper after nobody, like, yeah. he got so busy and all of that, you yeah. know, I, I respected his space. Hmm. We'll talk once in a while. I always call him, like, bro, remember, don't get carried away. Hmm. I know what I'm saying, hmm. you know? And funny enough, last week he, he just randomly reached out to me like, Baba, how far now? You're there around. I want to come see you. I'm like, uh, I was in Gabon because yeah. I had a gig in Gabon last week. I said, No, I'm not on ground. But soon as I arrived, let's say I was excited. Yeah. You know, and then he came, he pulled up, pulled up on me two days ago. Yeah. He came. He even brought a drink, brought a drink for me. Like, Magic, Shout are you okay? Magic <laughs> very good guy. Very good guy. You're bringing good drinks guy. to me, like, you know, and then we ho- opened. We, we dined together, you know, oh, everyone, we so shared cool. the whole yeah. success story. He played what he's been up to. He's trying to put uh, a body of work yeah, together. He is, he you is. Know, and I'm so proud of him. And I also played the Greatness 3 album yeah, for him as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, I mean, he didn't produce on this, yeah. you know, but I played it for him. And he was like, oh, I, mean, I love this producer. I love this. And yeah. I mean, it was a very healthy conversation. And I feel that's what life should be. Because I remember when we started working, some of my colleagues, I don't want to mention, they were like, Baba, sign this boy. So I'm like... Hmm. Okay, sign them. Sign them as, make a sign them, hold them down. Hmm. My thoughts of growth in life, and it's always been like, everybody I work with, let's all elevate and grow together. Hmm. You know, so I'm happy for him. Shout yeah. out to Magic Sticks. Shout out to Magic Sticks. You know, um, my experience with Magic Sticks was, it is, I found him, I, the first time I heard Tune Into The Kings of Songs and Blues was on Greatness One, I can't lie. That was the first time I heard it. But where I took notice, he produced a song for Ryan Omo in 2019. Ryan Omo was signed to Dr. Dollar at the time. Yeah. Um, titled Belema. And yeah, yeah, I know that track. I, I listened that. to that song and I was like... Who produced Who the... 
I even tweeted about did that. I tweeted about this like 2020, if I'm not mistaken, or 29. I can't remember. But I tweeted that like, people need to go and be, yeah, like to work with this guy. No, I think I've seen you rave about Majestics. So like sure. Majestics, yeah, he's good. He's good. He's, he's, good. he's, good. Really he's always been special. Rave about yeah, he's, he's always good. been special. So I really shout out to you for that. For you have that's one that's one part of your ANR. footprint. Okay. Yeah. What part of your footprint? Your tree, right? Um, so that's another flower for you, I guess. How Thank you. you. About that? Thank that's you. Analogy. But why, uh, why did you? Sorry, yes, please go I on. I mean, I feel I feel blessed because my ideology about life is, at some point, people are going to be your act. They, they will act as a stepping stone yeah. to the next level in your life. You know, yeah. and that's them directly or indirectly blessing you. And that's that's I'm I'm big on that. Yeah, you get me. So um, I feel fulfilled. I feel happy to see him where he is now and like i said when we met the other day we still spoke about life and like how's his family how's your mom how's everyone stay focused don't get carried away you know mm. sound yeah. like an old man's conversation stay focused <laughs> <laughs> don't get carried don't away. lose because, yourself because don't you, know, be fight. you know how they say like this you know how they say like experience is the best teacher it is and they don't sell experience in supermarket it is it you is. cannot you go to the shopping mall and say, give me, give me one 100k worth of experience. Yeah. If you don't get it from people that have genuinely gone through the process, yeah. then I don't know what you're doing. Especially if you have these people around you. Yeah. You know, ask questions. Like, yeah. tap into their, yeah. their grace and their yeah. knowledge. You know, it just help, helps to guide, guide you as an individual. Yeah. But, but what's this thing about you working like... People just wanting to sign talent because if like this person go pop tomorrow, I can just quickly sign and then hold and down. So that when money comes tomorrow, we I know say you know, we don't necessarily have any plan for the person because why are you asking the generation to sign magic? I mean, investment you to, everywhere. You, have to you just understand. tie the person down. So so you so, so it depends. Yeah. It depends, right? Exactly. It depends because yeah. to some people, they love to discover talent, and when mm. you discover a talent, when you nurture the talent, and you spend you are, money, you are investing. So it's business at the end of the day. Yeah. So we're talking about the ones that don't have plans for this person they're signing. They just want to sign you. Yeah, there are some people like that. Yeah. They just want to sign you because they've seen the grace. Opportunity. And then they will not hold you down, which is really not fair. Yeah. You know, but let God just guide us so we don't fall into Amen. such debt. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Did you mention, why did you feel the need to do nobody remix like one on all, all the nobody remix? <laughs> ah, why good that? question. Please, why? Like that? I said, I'm what always happened? thinking ahead. And it feels cool when I'm on maybe Twitter and then people are now <laughs> saying, all these things you artists are doing now, when did you have to start it? We were insulting him. Now he has inspired a lot of you guys. So for me, I mean, I guess my being exposed at the early stage of my career just opened my mind to a lot of things. And mind you, I'm a DJ. As a DJ, I can get away with whatever the fuck I want to do when it comes to messing with music. You know, and it's just artists that put themselves under unnecessary pressure sometimes. Because even as an artist, you can do these things. The essence of having a remix to a song is to further, like, enhance the life lifespan of the record if the remix is properly done. Yeah. So for me, nobody was blowing crazy. It was huge. Nobody became a global smash. Even though you fought me on this, you fought me about the song. <laughs> me? DJ Neptune. I it, you. He subbed me about it. Really? Yeah. Hey, Father Why? Lodo. Yeah. Why? Yeah. We will get to that. I want to know. You, I blocked you. You, yeah. I subbed you. So Cameraman, I hope he, I didn't beat you as well. At the time of 2020, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we were home and songs were doing good, but they were not achieving their full potential because you couldn't see what the true success yeah, was. Yeah, this COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this COVID, yeah. Okay. No, no, nobody came out in December 2019, no, or January 2019. No, 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 nobody came out. We went into lockdown in March. March, you came out. Okay. Nobody, so nobody originally was meant to come out March 5th. I would never forget. Oh. So the distro company now told me that, oh, we need to move your release to the 13th because we need to accommodate Joe Boy's next single. So That's let's give Joe space. Boy. You get me? And luckily for me, the whole country went into lockdown few days after I released yeah. nobody. So yeah. they actually wanted to... No, for, for, no, sorry. It was meant to be March 13th. Yeah. But they now moved it back to March 5th. Oh. And <laughs> we went into lockdown March 13th. Yeah. So it would have been a disaster for me. So nobody was out a week before the lockdown. 
people had had a feel of what of it, what, what it was, what it was. Like. and then going into lockdown it now became like the covid therapy song for everybody it was you and know? He, he, it became i mean people are going to say it was his love one season that became the biggest song mm-hmm. out of lockdown mm-hmm. but during that period in nigeria i think nobody became the biggest song out of that one. I don't think I don't think I'm I don't think I'm saying rubbish. No, no. no. I don't between, think you are correct though. Somewhere between nobody and Duduke. Duduke? No, nobody was huge. He was actually really huge though. Nobody was so huge. So nobody was huge. Nobody was nobody huge. Was and huge. I remember I, I don't know if you remember trailer. Yeah. The app trailer. And that's exactly what I was going to. So remember yeah. that the where nobody where I knew nobody was going to be a problem, like not just in Nigeria but across the world. Which is where, where you see the stream, where the streams are coming from. It's not just from here. Yes. Right. You would like there was an Islamic thing. Yes, Sarah. That was Sarah and really her family. Yes. Where? It yeah, yeah, that was where it took off. Shout, took out, shout out to Sarah and her family. We've never <laughs> met. There was no prior conversation. That was beautiful, Sha. Bruh. There was no prior I, conversation, and I think she was pregnant. Yeah, she, she was, was pregnant. pregnant. So, you, yeah. bro, like that clip made Went it to Al Jazeera. Oh. Yes. Ooh. I didn't know that. Yes. That clip made it to CBS. TV in California. Ooh. Trila Did they reach out to you? Yeah, I had an interview on CBS. Oh, shout out to Sarah. Like, then it now became another madness in France where a white girl and a black girl, little kids, danced together. So it now yeah. became like a racism, like say no to racism type of movement Ooh. with that. So adults were now recreating that clip as well, like mm. a black. And a, so like, it just blew so crazy. And I remember Trilla putting out an official article that this is the third most used song in the world. Well, yeah, it and was. And then the number one most used it song was on Trilla on, app. Yeah, it was. Yeah, correct. And then I did an article in in the middle, after, just after lockdown. And the article was about the top 10 Nigerian songs mm. on TikTok. On Not TikTok. Not Trilla now. TikTok. Yeah. Um, and I believe nobody was second just a fraction of duduke the third song i believe was gang by yeah yeah so i think so nobody was here anyway did you have to stop me so i I went (laughs) what did you do i went i went on um (laughs) one of my very first facts on the episodes and i said that there was no hits in nigeria (laughs) 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 and you have to went to go out to it that they have come again though. Is it because the song is by DJ? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember, I remember. So that was you. That was me. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember, I remember, I remember that tweet. I remember that tweet. I remember is it that tweet. Because the song is by DJ. I mean, that- I, I, I got the sentiment. So where I was coming from at the time was we hadn't seen the full spectrum. The one song that. We could say that I was cutting across everywhere in Nigeria at the time it was probably bad influence, probably, but like on Malay. Okay. Probably. In terms of like everywhere, nobody you could see it as like a wildfire, and a lot of it was actually not just even Nigeria at the time. I think yeah. it was different parts of Africa no, it was because crazy. of people that were that were on the song as well with yeah. him. Yeah. Joe Boy, who's huge in East Africa yeah, and, and Ghana. And Mr. Well. Izzy, who's e- huge in East Africa and yeah, Ghana. Yeah. So there was a lot of that. So as much as the song was gathering a lot of fucking numbers, you couldn't pinpoint so, a lot of the numbers to here at the time, time in the earliest days. But by the time we got out of lockdown... And just now... Oh bro, God. bro, like, like I kid you not... If that record, if I had that record around say this it, time, say it, say that shit. It's going if to be I a had that record song. around this Don't time, be a song. bro. Don't be a billboard song. Like, One I don't even know what have, what would have happened to my life, but still, it did it did a lot of good to my life. Yeah, yeah. It did a lot of good to my. I'm not even going to lie. Shout out to Joe Boy. Yeah. Shout out to Mr. Easy. Yeah. Shout out to Magic Sticks. Shout out to Magic Sticks. Oh, he I, produced it. Yeah, 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 that was Magic Sticks as well. So like, that song, I I feel that song came with its own special anointing. I agree. Because even when it's being played t- tomorrow, like I still am touring and. Whenever you play that song. I forget to play the song. And at the end of my set, someone woke up. But why didn't you play nobody? I came out because of nobody. Because I wanted to see you play nobody and perform it. Or like, oh, I'm so sorry. Because I'm trying to move 
past it. Yeah. Past it, but the song keeps. That's how, how crazy it is. And this same song created a lot of conversations, especially with the video. Shout out yeah. to TJ Murray. Shout out to TJ Murray. You know, we had like the whole, the, the little shit. Michael Jackson. Janet Jackson posted that video. I slid into a DM thanking her. We started the conversation. Ooh. Ludacris made a video. And then I sent him a DM thanking him. And then we started <coughs> the conversation. So like, I was looking like God. Like, because you know, like every day something new happens. And then I go yeah. to bed being grateful to yeah. God. And then, and then I wake up and there's something bigger. I'm like, okay, what the hell is going on? You know, but it hurts me because it was during the COVID era. But it then, was. I mean, I still would not deny that it was a huge blessing for me The perspective, me as well. I'm also Christian. The, the way I like to look at some of those things is, if it wasn't co for COVID, maybe yeah, it might yeah, not have been that. Yes, I, I, I completely agree. Because I mean, then... It might, it might have. The world might, might have moved past it more quickly. Yeah, it's, because I feel like a lot of people are still emotionally attached. Like, it slips them back yeah. to... So, I, I completely agree. Yeah, like, yeah, no I sentiment agree. Yeah, about that. So, yeah. that's why when I try to analyze, I'm like, you know what? God, you know how you, you know, did it. Yeah, you know, you know, you know why, why that, so. that happened. Yeah. I agree. And shout out to Trailer. There was, even, there was one Friday that I think that they were showing, like, how... If you click nobody... There was something that I saw, or maybe you reported it. I can't remember that. Nobody passed it. Something like that. Like, a bunch of people just doing content to nobody on the Friday. Mm. Crazy. No, no, it's crazy. I'm not even going to lie. Like, like that. Yeah, go, go ahead. On. No, that's that record. <laughs> we got... We're, okay, so to answer your question, what gave birth to the idea of nobody. the Nobody Remix yes. EP? I think you already said it. No, no, no. I didn't no, touch, I, I I didn't didn't touch on it before he, he, he yeah. came into the conversation. So, we're getting lots of unofficial versions from... Artists. Colombia, oh. from the Middle Races. East, you know, and I'm looking at it like, why, uh, why let these numbers waste? Ooh. You know, so me being a smart guy, I went into my, I Radio pulled on my greatness Red jacket. <laughs> greatness! You Fair. know, so Fair. I'm like, okay, you know what, this song, we die here. We have a French remix, French remix. we have a Middle East remix, we have Igbo remix, we have Alsa uh, remix, we have bro, Yoruba you remix. you were just going. I was going. And the good thing is, they all did good, good numbers. numbers. Good numbers yeah, so did. added more value to the, music. to the music, to the record, to the future artists as well. You know, yeah. it became something they could also add up to their to their sets. Yeah. And you know, everyone was happy at the end of the day. Is it the okay? Go. Please. Is it the so nobody like you said was a very very successful song, and of course you worked with different artists. Is it your is it the nobody remix that you worked on with Lecon that brought about your issue with him that he called you out for? Yes. What's Shout out to Lecon. Shout out to Lecon. Shout out to Lecon. He's my brother regardless. Yeah. Um, so let me just establish here that nobody had anybody's money. I mean, I want to believe you have uh, the knowledge know, from know, music I know, business I know, I know, I know, and I know you exactly as well, Melody. Yeah. So when you have a deal with a distro company or a label and you have been given uh, advanced marketing money, to push the music, the videos, or whatnot. They have to recoup. Yep. It's return on investment. Yep. So that's where we are with nobody. Pre recoupment. Not the original. Okay. The, the remix. Icons remix. The icon remix and every other remix. Okay. So what Lecon is fighting for is the documentation. And when I say shout out to him, in all fairness, he reached out to me. So it wasn't like Anyone was trying to cheat anyone, mm. right? And when he did, I referred to my legal team. I like, please. I even asked him for his lawyer's contact, which he sent to me, and I forwarded to them. And mm. then my lawyer, I remember my lawyer said, oh, I even know his lawyer. And then conversation was ongoing between them. Mm. I'm not a legal person. I'm mm. a creative. Mm. I still have to perform. Mm. I still have family on the side to attend to. Shout to family. You get me? You know, so I've put this in the hands of people that will handle it. And then there was a conversation that was ongoing. So I guess maybe my own fault in all of this was not going back to find out what was going mm. on. But a certain percentage was proposed to his people. And then they kicked back at it. And the conversation was just there. So now what I feel he... Sh I mean, you're not going to tell people how to do their thing. But it, I feel it's just the tone of how he, he came about the tweet. Making it sound like... This guy has been making money off this song. And he's he only hasn't given me one nera. Alpha guy for four years. Whereas if the label is not done recouping. It's what it is. It's Nicole. what it is. None <laughs> of us is going to earn a penny 
for me, if you understand music business, that's how it works. That's why. That's just. So what that's it why is. I said first, let's establish the fact that nobody had anybody's money when it comes to this conversation. You know, but you know the sweet thing about it, I didn't even know there was a tweet. Because I'm always the least to know what's going on on social. I'm too into whatever I'm trying to do and achieve. Yeah. So I got an email from the distro company like, guy, what's going on? Please get to this. We don't need this type of negative. I'm never a negative guy. I don't, you know, I've never yeah. built my brand on negativity. negativity. So there's no point trying to start it now. You know, so I, I now clicked on it. I went on to, I saw, I saw the rest, but like, God damn it. Then I picked up the phone and called my lawyer. Like, what's going on? I'm like, ah, Really? Let me call his people. It wasn't even up to 20 minutes while all of, the, all of that madness was going on. The document was signed. And it was still the percentage that we presented. presented that was signed. So I don't know if it was miscommunication from his own, his own team, not carry, carrying him mm. along, or he just felt like, oh, you know what, I just need to get this guy somehow. I need to get his attention to this. And mind you, that's not the only song me and Nico have done. Hmm. On my greatness yeah. too. Yeah. First track, yeah. YJ Lake yeah, on Ladi Po, right. Rise Up. That's one it of was his, on that's, there. One, that's one of his best verses. It was on there. The and verse was very and good. the documentation for that was done immediately. So if I could hmm. do that, was with nobody that is that the verse that goes uh, 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 that was the verse actually. Yeah, you know, so like shout out to him. Um shout out to Ice Prince. Ice, Ice Prince, Prince did call me like few days after that apparently they they i think they live in the same vicinity yeah okay. and they were together and ice called me like ah neb are you alone i want to talk to you yada yada yeah your boy is here with me i don't like the fact that that shit played out like that i know you're not that kind of person i know he's not that kind of person you know but whatever it is i don't want any bad blood you know you guys try and resolve i like ice prince is it is there with you it's been resolved you know so we spoke you know, I, that's why I say I understand where he was coming from. So it's just how the whole situation came out. Because even till this morning, when I'm promoting my song, people are saying like, "Oh God, you don't pay Lake, huh? <laughs> Like, <laughs> you know how crazy people can be on social media. It never ends. But I don't have time. Like, like I mean, the deal has been sorted. It's been settled. Yeah. Everyone is happy. But mm -hmm. do you have any? Do you do you have any bad blood towards that? Like. You could have called me or something. So now that's the thing with me. Like, I don't. Because I. that's why even Ice put that call across. I go, Neptune, don't. I say, Ice, you know me. That's why you're even calling me. So there's no whatever. If I see if I see the need to still work with Lecon, if there's that, I will call him. We'll still, if we meet our gigs, we we'll, you know, he's still, he's my brother for life. No bad I really blood. find this, like, documentation conversation sometimes. I find it very confusing. Who? Cool. Like, when, like, DJ Neptune explaining that, they just signed the documentation like yeah. for the song after the call out and stuff. So it feels like people sometimes artists just get into the studio and they record, then they now do documentation years after. That's exactly what that's it was. Exactly. That's like, exactly. I tell you, I can tell you for free. There's it's some better to just do at the beginning. There's some collaboration no, because no, so the song might not come out. Exactly. So it's when it's time for the song to come out that when you now start seeking for clearance. You know, and then you start discussing the business side, okay, on the publishing, on yeah. the royalties. Okay, yeah. are we paying you off for your verse? What how, percentage or, is be? you know, and then everyone have their own terms of how they work. Some can be off net, some can be off gross, yep. you know. But if it's a situation whereby the label has to recoup, and now this is where some of these international labels be fucking our guys from behind, hmm. because I almost got into a similar situation. situation with nobody. It was crazy in the Latin market, and then I don't want to mention the label. The label they reached out like, oh, we want to do a remix for this, we can get you Licensing. Bad Bunny, we can get you uh, Ozazuna, what's the name? Ozuna. Blah, blah, blah. Ozuna. Ozuna, you know, and all of that stuff. I'm like, okay, send your proposal, let's, let's have a look at it, you know, and then they send the proposal, I think it was going to be for like, like 100k or like 200k deal or some crazy thing like that. And in that proposal, when they sent the names of influencers, these are influencers that already, they already jumped on the song. So if we had gone with that deal, they would add all of that to the marketing, pad it up, and then we have so to wait till recruitment is done. So if recruitment is going to take 12 years, bye bye, we go damn. And then they brought a very shitty deal. They were going to take 90 and then ah. give myself Joe and Easy 10. That's and when crazy. I discovered with Easy, like, like, bro, was, like was the job this. Was, was I. It, was it a distro or was it a licensing conversation? It was a licensing conversation. That's what they say. 90%. Mm. 
That's still insane. Because, because, check, because I'm sure to them, like, yeah, we're giving you bad bunny. Yeah, we're we're giving, giving you. Zuna, yeah. Yeah. It's still insane. You know, so that's why we didn't take. But I would have been like, okay, yeah, let's take it. If I was looking at it from the part of popularity or numbers, because obviously their numbers would have affected my numbers. Yeah. And I would have. Yes. You know, but I mean, sometimes it's like for you. But but some t- but the one thing about like songs like that though is that when they hit the hands of a major, things change. Mm-hmm. Things change. Mm-hmm. Things do be changing you know when it. they hit when they hit the hands. You of know it because they have the they machinery. have the plug that plays. <laughs> yeah. You know, just insert the socket. Yeah. And you just see the live one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's what it is, you know. especially when you collect an advance. You yep. Know. Um, speaking of which, greatness three. Yes. Are you ever going to type title one of your? Are you are you ever going to not title any of your albums? No, nah, I don't think so at this point. I don't I don't think so because that's a very that w- word came to me in a very de- defined divine manner. When I was creating Greatness One in 2018, I was done with the album. I still didn't have a name. It's just like also with my stage name. Two years into my career, I didn't have a DJ name because oh. I wanted something unique. So with the project, I wanted something that would stand out. And because I wasn't getting it, I just chilled. So it was one of those random evening in the studio. I was a bit tired and I just decided to have a little nap. And while I was at that, it felt like God was just talking, speaking to me. And I was saying, yeah, you've done so many great stuff. You know, you're working mm. on a great, like that word, great, 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 just kept on popping in my head. Mm. And I, I just woke up, you know, I f- like, fuck it. I'm, I'm, I'm all about greatness. <laughs> and I went into the studio and so it's a very greatness. divine. So like, I don't think it's just going to be like, now we're on three, yeah. four, five, six, till maybe hundred, till, uh, I don't know. We could push in it. <laughs> Mero, the title of this episode is pretty set. <laughs> greatness in all caps with exclamation. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree actually. I love that. <laughs> so yeah. Shout out to, shout out to DJ episode. Um, Thank so, you. At, when did you start working on this album? Um, I started working on this album. So I, my, my last album was in 20, 2021. 2021? Yeah, November 26. 2021, yeah. yeah, it's so crazy because that album dropped November 26 and then Greatness 3 dropped September 6. So when I saw that, I was like, 6-6, six, six, okay? Mm. That's some divine... That's like but that. there's no last 6, so it's not 6-6-6. Six, 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 so it's just 6-6. Six, six. No, what is? no, no if, you do, if you do next year, you do 6 again. Ah, no. then that one is something else. <laughs> You know, so I started working on this project, um, say, middle of 2022. Mm. You know, that's mm. when I started reaching out, started putting, you know, so that's when I put out the single with um, Ruga Bienvenue, which yeah. is on this album. Yeah. You know, and then um, I put out the one with Joe Boy Momo, which is also on this album. You know, so I've been working, working, working. And as a matter of fact, I've, I've, I'm halfway into Greatness 4 as we speak. Yes, so. Uh-uh. Yeah. So you're never letting go of Greatness? No. no Bienvenue is actually a very strong digital, digital song, performing really well on yes, 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 yes. Shout out to Ruga. Shout and to um, Ruga. right now, the song is beginning to gain more momentum Momento. in the North America region, yeah. like the Caribbean. So we're, we're, we're very intentional with the push now. It's insane. And yeah. see what we can get from there. I, I couldn't believe when I saw that it had like 10 million streams on Spotify. Yeah, like know? 11 million it's now, crazy. yeah. It's crazy. Like, it's so... There's something with music, right, and how it's been consumed in this side of the world. Hmm. Like that record is big in East Africa, in Europe. Ruga was performing it when he was on tour, and I was getting videos. People were singing word for word. But here, when you play it, it seems like ah, uh, they know it, they sing along, but you don't get that wow response. And you know, and some records are just like that. Yes, actually. Some records are just like that. You know? I mean, for artists, like I believe that. The era that we're in is the era for artists or people that are putting out music or people that are creators or creatives because now you don't need a hit anymore. Nah. Mm. You just yeah. need a song that's performing well. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's where some of us put ourselves yeah. under pressure. I mean, a hit is nice because now you can go to a show, you slam it, blah, 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 everybody will go crazy. But would you rather have a hit that's performing two million? On Spotify, or would you rather have a song that people don't consider a hit that's doing 10? Yeah, but it's not possible for a song to, have, to be a hit song and not, and not have like no, massive it is, numbers. It is, it is. I will explain to you. So, there's some street pop songs, yeah, that's all up on your face, yeah, 
but the numbers are not make is not matching up. Yep. Oh. Yes. You can't get an advance, bro. Nobody gives a shit. So when labels are trying to have conversations, like I'm in some conversations right yeah. now that by God's grace would change my life. Yeah. yeah. And it's well. off what they've seen me do. Over time. Over time. So it's not about having a 170 million stream numbers on Spotify, yeah. but they see there's this consistency. Okay, nobody, 20 something million. And I beg with Joe Boy, um, 11, 12 million, yeah. beer venue. Okay. There's some consistency. There's some consistency. consistency. This you know, compared bankable. to having 130 million, and then the other one is 800k, 1.5, you know? So, on the business side, you need to, makes, you need to understand those metrics. Makes, for you on the business side, and for the for where the music industry is now, now. Yeah. it's free game for people. You, you have a song, you are, you are performing well digitally, you are earning revenue. Hmm. It's way more important. Yeah. Than whatever cost that you're getting. Yeah. Like right now, my maybe because my focus has changed. It's not just about oh, it's a hit. It's not a hit. Is he making money? Standard, standard, and it just keeps you afloat. Hmm. Yeah. You no, know, compared to locking yourself in your zone, like how much until I get the heat before I drop, yep. Yep. and then other people are dropping. They and are they're consistent. Just their and just, yeah, you know. So it's a game of numbers now because that just puts you in a better conversation yeah. when people want to do business with you. What was the toughest song to record on this album? Ah. The toughest song to record on this album. Ah. I'll be honest. I don't think I had any serious... Hmm. No, none I can think of. So what I did for myself is after... You really like this 12? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I too. After after COVID, when I got my space, I just told myself, moving forward, yeah. when I'm making music, I want to be very very comfortable. Yeah, you know, so I can easily get my talents in with vibe, with chill. So it's yeah. not about ah, uh, we are send we are verse. working with time. We'll send the verse. Let's create together. Let's let's marry. Let's laugh. Let's chill, and then get into the studio. And like that, just for that gives you room to create more magic yeah you know so i i don't think i had any difficulty aside from maybe some that i might not be able to get to the studio that i have to go to their places yeah. which is normal or maybe they record and then send verse and then we'll go back and forth as regards direction yeah what's your favorite song on the album i'm going to put you on this <laughs> every song on that ah! album. <laughs> <laughs> i know you say i'm being political can you ask that but every song i'm going to tell you but there's one that's dear to me oh yeah which and one? it's just because I still rem remind myself that I'm a DJ, I'm not an artist. And as a DJ, <laughs> when you speak about the craft proper, yeah. you can't take away hip hop from DJs. Oh, so I always like to create a record that will give you that sense of hip hop. The DJ is behind the turntables, yep. the MC is in front of the microphone. Yep. So, normal day, the first track, and every project I put out, if you take notes, it's the first track song. starts with a hip hop yep. track. It's a rap song. Yeah, it's a rap song. So, yeah. shout out to N6. Yep. You put N6 on the song. Man. Yep. I don't, I don't think a lot of young kids know that N6 is. So, rap. let me tell you something funny. <laughs> N6, N that session wasn't even planned. Oh. I was just. Um, there's an artist I wanted to work with, a Ghanaian artist I, I wanted to work with that was in town. Yeah. And then he came to mind. We started the session. Yeah. And uh, we're supposed to link up the next day. Yeah. So he now went to see Ice Prince. Yeah. Because that was around the time Ice Prince was about to release his album. So he had like a listening. Yeah. And Ice had invited me as well. So I pulled up and they would meet each other there. And Ensis was there. And I went with one of the producers I work with now, uh, Tim Bomb. Very yeah. amazing. He produced a lot of songs on, on Greatness 3. Next three years since I've got pop now. No, he don't the do pop already. Don't worry. He don't the do pop. He don't okay. the do pop already. You know, so we got into that space and then he just randomly started playing beats. You know, and then N6 heard the beats for Normal Day, which I created for one artist from Ivory Coast that I wanted to work with, DDB. His name is DDB. That's, that's, my, that's my favorite rapper one of my favorite rappers right now. Yeah. Didi Bay, yeah. Didi Bay. Didi Bay, yeah. Yeah, French is, is incredible. So, Normal Day Beat was created for Didi Bay. Wow! <laughs> so, when N6 heard the beat, I'm like, what? What's this? Drill? Who, like a Nigerian made drill like this? 
Like, that's the boy right there. And luckily for us, there was a studio, little studio set up there. And then that's how we just started. I need you to make that song with GGP. Yeah. No, no, no. no we're talking. We're, 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 we're talking. We're, we're, we're going to knock up something. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, shout out to N6. Um, I say this because um, Osags, Osags used to harass him that N6, where's the album? <laughs> N6 for <laughs> Fort Republic. I know, yeah, yeah Fort nah. Republic. I, it's, it's, I, I need you to actually do a documentary right, at some point. So, you know, I, I've never ever said this before. Uh, because in this generation, right, you and Spino, like the Ray Power crew, maybe someone needs to do a Ray Power crew something, Sorry. right? Yeah. Maybe a three part series. Just, yeah. Do you know why? It's not about clout or to tell your story. Storytelling. It's to document it for the culture. It's yeah. Yeah. No, very, very true. Very true. Very true. And I feel that's, that's, yeah. that, that is, that is missing in our industry yes. somehow. It's and I feel that's why a lot. for like four years. And I feel that's why a lot of these yeah. new cats don't seem to get some things right. Yeah. yeah because they can't fall back to something to 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 watch or listen and yeah. help guide. Yeah. Yeah. Guide them. So yeah, I agree. And everybody's doing like we we have enough Afrobeat documentaries now. We need to start doing industry peculiar documentaries. documentaries. Do you understand? <laughs> no, no, I'm not I'm not dissing. Like for example, like the people that are going to do the Afrobeat documentary, they know how they're going to do it. Mr. Mr. But Ms. if you're having Shona Afrobeat documentary, are you not talking about DJs? No, no. What I'm saying is, Mr. Ashuna is doing another one that's yes, he is. He's going to document the industry. Yes. But I'm, I'm talking about peculiar I agree. parts. I Does agree. that make sense? I agree with you. Peculiar parts. DJ. Real power. Yeah. Um, something. Yeah, I agree. Do you understand? I agree. It's, a, it's, a, it's an important part of the industry. Like someone could do alaba. I agree. Do you understand? Like I that's agree. a whole story. A fucking. Like, Does that make sense? I yeah, agree. Yeah. Those yeah. are the fucking things I want to see. Like I you agree. see America, like you see f American music industry. Like I'm seeing someone doing a documentary about the crossover success of like Swedish um, people from like the producers, the Stargates, the Red Ones, all of them. They are putting them in like it's the the um, Max Martin. All of them are in the whole documentary. Like, I agree we with need you. To do some of these things, so that's that's really where I'm. I agree. With anyway, um, my but own you, favorite but song. But you, you know that before you see your favorite song, yeah. DJ Neptune was about to tell us something he has never said before. What was it? In response to the documentary question. Oh you yeah. Know, so there's um. Sorry about that. Um, may so rest in peace. Um, I don't want to mention his name. Because hmm. I actually feel bad for like years. He was chasing me, like bro, like oh. your life. In the industry is a testimony. Yeah, it is. And we need to say it without filtering anything. Facts. Because you are living testimony and you need to you you you're inspiring people, but people yeah. need to know like the insight of what has happened, what you've gone through to make it to where you are, because that would further help guide the newbies, you know. And I slept on it. Hmm. Like, it really hurts me so bad. Like, I slept on it till the brother passed away. Hmm. R.I.P. R.I.P., bro. R.I.P. Like, um, my favorite song, Emmanuel and Tonight. Songs. What's your favorite song? The one with King Madi. Honest? Yeah. Okay. I like Agen that. Agenda, agenda. I like that. Um, Joshua Baraka. Yeah. Joshua Baraka, yeah. That's, oh. that's, that's tonight. Talento. Yep. Now nah, Joshua That's is another Joshua. Shout challenge. out, shout out to everyone I worked with on this project. Everyone came like through, through for me. Yeah. But you see, Joshua, like I connected with him hmm. when I was on tour um, around the East African region. Yeah. Not even last was it last year? Last year, yes, early he last, last year. year. Yeah, early last year. Oh, Nana. And then you now had a remix. So the, mo the moment I touched down Uganda, like, yeah, like guys. it was playing everywhere. Bang, bang, oh, bang, bang, bang. It was a number one song in Uganda. Yes, it was almost you I wanna know. Let you go. Shout out to Kami Storm. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I was like, you know what? I need to work with this kid. Yeah. You know, yeah. So he pulled up at, at my event. We connected, we exchanged numbers, and then we started talking. You know, and then he came to Nigeria. We, I got him into my studio. We knocked off some things. He went back, you know, and then one day he just like, bro, I know like you've been trying to work. We need to work. I have this song. Listen to it. If you like it, let's wrap it up. And that's how we sent tonight to me. That is insane. I'm like, okay. 
This is when I'm the... creating an album, I like varieties. Yeah. I'm not because yeah. I feel like the concept of an album is to have different yeah. flavor. You get me? So yeah. having that record, like yes, this just takes care of the dancer market yeah. for me. Yeah. You know, and then we 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 finessed it, and boom, that's how we came up with tonight. And it was in Nigeria recently. I, I see the opportunity to shoot the video. Yeah. yeah. You know, so tonight... Oh, you already shot the video? We've shot it's the video already. already. Tosha was Bro, I've like shot four videos from this video. project. Emanuela has a video already. Honest video is dropping next week. We're not playing, bruh. We're not playing, bro. We're out, yo. We're out. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm excited. The, the project is out. Um, everyone is loving it. The yeah. feedback has been dope. Yeah. And um, I feel blessed. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're going to keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing yeah. it till it gets to where it needs to get until to. it gets to the level of greatness. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Anyways, yeah. I know that as we wrap up the show, or before we wrap up the show, like you said, you're not a social media person. You get called out on social media, you don't even know because you're not even there until you get sent an email. That's how OG, OG you are. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, you're no, not don't a Twitter like baby. That. Don't put it like that. I'm still, I'm still in, in connect with what's going on. I just always oh, you know. mind my business. Yeah. Even when I go on social media, I'm just only checking anything that we It's the way to live. There's like, so much going on on social media yeah, every bloody like, day, I promise you. You know, yeah. so... So on social media, there was something that was trending and people were having a conversation about it. It's the justice for... Um, justice for Christiana. Justice for Christiana. For Basically, they're talking about the uh, like the amount of women that are getting killed like at different points or in on a daily, on a weekly, or yeah. monthly in Nigeria by like family members, you know, f lovers. Yeah, is, it, is it the story of a girl that was on but, her way? Uh, to so about 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 three girls this week alone. <sighs> yeah, this is just some really sad story. One of them is a twelve-year-old. Oh God! Yeah, which is really something oh. that breaks my heart. Yeah, just showed the amount of decadence in our society when I a fourteen-year-old boy can defile a fourteen. Broke into girl. the house. He broke into the house. There's, uh, you know, one of the stories where the boy tore the net. I'm not sure that's Christiana now. One of that story, the boy. Okay, is the girl, the girl that is in the hospital that yeah. needs a surgery. Yeah. The boy broke into the house. I can't remember her name. I need to get her name out. Broke into the house. The the, the son of a military man. The girl broke into the boy broke into the house. Tore the net of the house. Broke into the house. Went into the kitchen. Took a pestle. Went to the. It's the girl. Hit the girl on her head, ripped her. The girl is con she's constant. She's like currently lying on contract. I think she's she's brain dead. They just said she has brain injuries. She has brain injuries. And that's a kid too. I think the boy is like 15. 14. It's 14. 14, right? And what is now pissing me off is that online I'm now seeing conversations about. So that's the one I said. Yeah, yeah, rehabilitation conversation. What stupid rehabilitation? If you want to, if you are a 14 year old boy, you want to have sex. That's adult things. You must be punished like an adult. But I, what, I, what I'm wondering, what I am wondering is, what is going on with the level? Like, where do they see that level of violence? And yeah. what, they, what even annoyed me this week is that I was driving, literally driving in my car, minding my business, just going on my lane. Somebody was behind me, and he was honking, and trying to get me to leave the road or be faster with how I was moving. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, I'm, I'm like, like what's going Kelly, Glee Glee wants to be rushing you. The, I yeah, the guy was, and yeah. even it was a guy, he was just doing, bah, bah, bah. there was nothing going on. No. I was just going, this guy left, like now, was not driving fast, like speed. Next thing he came, he brushed my car intentionally. And sped. Can you imagine, like, what level of wickedness what level is of that? Human? Aggressive. He was just, and the guy is driving. It's cool, kuru, kuru. Kuru, 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 kuru. You see, you see, when you see car, that, you, it's already far gone. I didn't even know what was <laughs> you, should, you should be far Move. gone. Far far gone. You should far be far gone. <laughs> gone. <laughs> I didn't oh. even look at the car. Do you know that was bars, nigga. <laughs> when the no, guy brushed so, so, me, so there are a lot I had to park people. my car. Nigerians, I feel like there's a lot of... And I, saw, I just saw the man just driving. I was just like, the level of anger, yeah. level of violence, the level of unnecessary... Yeah, yeah, I, 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 funny enough, I, I, I witnessed one when I was trying to pull up to you guys. Yeah. So there was a trailer that was trying to make a U-turn. Yeah onto the streets, and there was this small uh, uh, boat. I don't want to mention the brand, the name of this, yeah, so yeah, they I don't feel the disrespected, but you know that's very small one. I know the car, I know the car. I was already on my, I was just, just trying to, if you see the way the guy accelerated, you guess this guy was almost going to run under the truck. I'm like, yeah, you, I'm not even dragging around with you. Like, no, the level of, the, the 
it's just too much. People are just anger. angry for no reason. Like, but I, I don't think that I don't think that anger is why a forty year old boy is really no, it's not no, 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 at no, 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 no. I'm like, just giving you a totally different. So with yeah. that, me, I'm just speaking of my own like anger. Like that, that boy, one is a rapist. That, that boy, one is a yeah. That boy saw it somewhere. That's my point. Like, that's where what are about people that, seeing yeah. all so these things that's, from? That's what I was driving at. That's what I was driving at. So so the thing is, the thing is, yes, we're in the social media era, right? And there are a lot of things that are not being controlled. Facts. And that's where these kids see these things. Yep. Recently, a couple of days ago, I got a news because my family, they, they had, well, let me Don't just say where they are. Yeah. So they told me there was, there was a random shooting. A 14 year old boy, his dad bought him a gun. And this kid, Went to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah, in the news. Yeah, this happened yeah, like in, in Atlanta. It it happened like is that the one that, that happened there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just it was his dad that bought him the gun. Yeah. It was his but dad. But I buy a little buffer. Buffer. Yeah. So the boy would have seen some <laughs> some some violent videos somewhere. I think it's. Why cool. are you buying a fourteen year old gun? I, I listened to an it's, episode. I listened to an, I listened to a podcast called Daily by New York Times. That it's a daily podcast. Yeah. And the podcast. Sorry to cut short. No, no, no. The good. podcast was there was there was an episode about two months ago. That was about how parents were. St- America was considering the possibility of making parents liable for the accounts for the offenses of their underage children. They should now. I they think should. That they, should they should have done that a long time I ago. Really like, are you joking? Yes, even this boy, this fourteen-year-old boy, I think the parents should be held responsible. Are, are, are you joking? Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, so they're going to go to school. And porn, they're they're going to miss with friends. Join bad eggs. Like parents just need to be attentive. But at sometimes the parents do all the best things in the world, and the child still turns out yeah. bad. But at the end of the day, your ch- a child that is capable of raping a fourteen-year-old girl and hitting her on the head. Number one, I don't think that's his first time. That's, How about the boy that, that killed his that killed his neighbor, and they found out that he buried his sister in the house. Yeah, he that two years parents, ago. And the and his parents knew <laughs> about it. They went to the compound and found that he had killed his sister. They buried there. Yeah. And he killed his sister. I think. I think. At How do people have this in the same compound? Like, and the parents. Oh. This, this one, I think the parents knew. Allegedly. Oh yeah. How did they, how did they his sleep? sister is buried in the compound. And he the has next killed three people. He killed his three girlfriend. Killed his girlfriend. Killed his neighbor. Killed his. Killed, killed his sister. Is he working with the family? Are they using this? Oh. Bye-bye. I guess we're done. Thank you so much, Jay Neptune, for Thanks coming. For greatness. Thanks for having me. Like this was. Yeah, this was a beautiful one. Go check out Greatness 3. Yes, yeah, so it's out. Go stream it. Share with your friends, family, yeah. your enemies. Don't be stingy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Share be the stingy. greatness. Share the greatness. <laughs> Different genre. Afro, beat, dance, or R&B, Ooh. pop, whatever it is you want. Is on that project. Enjoy it and have fun with it. And share, like he said, he's you know recorded some videos, so we should be expecting videos to drop. Yeah, away. yeah, yeah. Honest is dropping on Tuesday with King Maddy. No, on Monday, sorry, with okay. King Maddy. Um, we wanted to drop it yesterday because it's a new day now, I believe. But because there was so much going on with the album and we didn't want it to. So Monday. Monday. And then that's the lead single into the next one. And we'll just take it one step at a time. But I mean, I've shot four videos, like I said. I'm still going to shoot more. So don't be surprised if you are seeing videos pop up every three, three weeks. I'll be like, what's going on? Yeah. It's, it's work. It's, it's just greatness. What it is. It's greatness. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Dijen. Thanks for having me. Absolutely I had a good time. having you here on the show. Go check out Greatness 3. And when you're doing that, make sure you grab yourself a bottle of Shivas. I would yes. recommend 12 because that's one that I like. <laughs> XV. That's what you like. It's what it is. What yeah, I like everything. You like everything? You buy. <laughs> drink, buy it drink Shivas. <laughs> that's the cocoa. Drink Shivas, that's the cocoa. <laughs> and follow us across all social media platforms at Zero Conditions Pod. Follow DJ Neptune. The at, OG. Yes, at, at DWE, DJ Neptune. DWE, DWE, J A Y Neptune. Or just type greatness on Instagram. Greatness! You, you see, just type greatness on Instagram. Subscribe you go pop up. To, you go pop up. You go pop up. <laughs> you sure <laughs> die. <laughs> Subscribe to our YouTube channel too at Zero Conditions Pod. We'll be back again next week. Bye bye. Come on, we forgot to, to announce the people that won bottle. I don't want to talk about it, please. N- nobody won nothing. They won bottle. Which bottle? Uh-huh. They didn't get it. They got, oh, they didn't get this. They only get it. Next week. We're done, right? Yeah.